Hello everyone, Jake with the Problem Solver Channel. Today we got a Jeep Wrangler with a ripped seat on the cloth. It's a pretty common problem. Uh, we got some wind and rain. I went to the dentist today, but uh, I'm going to take this stitch and make it look a little better. Somebody did a home stitch repair. And uh, let's go check it out. Fix this seat up. I'll show you how to do it. It's double needle stitch or blind needle stitch. Okay. So that's the do it yourself home job, which did it, you know, did its job. It kept it from getting out of control. It probably should have started it when it got first got started instead of waiting for it to get this big but you know wrong color thread looks a little hokey I'm gonna go ahead and clean it up okay so I'm just gonna cut this out and like I said I just went got back from the dentist and I'm I'm slightly not as focused as I normally am but uh whatever if i take the day off it costs me twice the money to go to the dang dance he ain't nothing but a tooth reconditioner anyways just like me well i don't do teeth but oh joking um uh... I'm sure this is so interesting. Maybe I'll cut it out. I don't know. So I I don't mark out my lines anymore where I'm going to stitch. But when I first started, or if I've got something real technical, then I will. And what I mean by that is, I'll just take a pen. And, and pre mark what I want to do. So, you know, just because this is so weak, I'm going to go a little bit further in than I might normally. I want to get a good bite on some material. Then I'm going to taper it so I don't get too bad of a pinch. And I, I, I'm not too worried about it. This is a 2009, and, uh, you know, it's for sale on a car lot. It's got 117,000 miles. Uh, I usually take all this stuff into consideration when I'm getting ready to work on a vehicle because a lot of my accounts like this one, <clears throat> I, I don't have to ask anybody. I just do it. They just they let me run run loose out here. So whatever I see that I feel like fixing, uh, I got free reign. Or you know they also will tell me about things like hey we got this we want you to do uh, so you know usually when you if you try to do a clean job you're gonna end up with twice as long a stitch as your rip because you got to taper this down to make it look nice I mean I might even go up to like here because you know I've been watching my own videos on the internet lately and I'm not really trying to show off so I a lot of times I don't even show the end result you know I don't I don't I look these cars over and make sure they're to my standard before I park them. But I notice in a lot of my videos, I'll, I'll end the video before I do that. And then it looks like I'm not doing quite as good a job as I actually do. So today I'm going to take a little bit extra time, talk it w over with you, and try to get a real nice result. We'll see what happens. It's not always easy with this thin material with this, this seam you know, to keep it right on that stitch and keep it normal looking, but we're gonna give it a shot. Well, see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to keep checking my camera because I bumped it. And I can't tell if it's focused. It's not focused, is it? There you go. All right. So I'm going to get my thread, closest color. This is how much hand stitching I've done with this. Used to be like that. That's a lot. Of course, a lot of it you just cut off and throw away. But anyways, I'm going to pull a tail from my needle, pull another tail from my other needle, and then I'm going to pull this out equal length as the stitch. And then I'm going to double that. And then I'm going to pull extra for messing up. Because it comes in handy. Sometimes I mess it up or I break a thread or I do something. 
I'm going to get into my pile of needles here. And I like to use uh, thin, round, I'm probably screaming into the microphone. Uh, I like to use thin round point needles because they make a smaller hole as you're using them and because this thread stays in there without, I mean, if the eye is too big, the needle just constantly falling off and it, it's irritating. Um, so I'll melt my end, and then I cut that little melted end off so it doesn't pop a bigger hole in the material than I want as I'm pulling it through. Otherwise it defeats the purpose of your skinny needle if you have a big chunk on the end of your thread. Sooner or later, you know what? I'm gonna go switch to my hot gloves. All right, I'm back. Uh, I got this idea of the the bright colored gloves because everything we do is so drab. It's so everything's gray and black, and my lighting is bad. So I figured it'd be a little easier to see what's going on if I popped a little color in here. All right, so I'm gonna start. This is kind of like a kind of like a cool kid. You know, you're trying to lace your shoes cool. You're going to start one needle, and you're going to start the other one directly across the other one. Not this far out, I'm just showing you. So you start it directly across the other one, and you're going to come forward underneath the material, and then you're going to go across. Same with the other side. You're going to come forward, and then you're, you're underneath the material, and then you're going to go across. And then you're going to go do it again. Come forward and cross. Come forward and cross. Come forward and cross. Come forward and cross. And you're going to do the same with the other side. Here we go comes out beautiful I, this is I paid someone to show me this when I was younger because I knew that there was a better stitch out there than what I was doing and stitching is so fun because it drastically changes things with almost no overhead other than your time and your skill and uh, you know it's kind of fun I mean we're here to make money but uh, <clears throat> you know the best days are the days you make a bunch of money and you got to be creative on coming up with quick ideas to repair things and you made a big difference and impact on the cars and your customers those are the good days you know I have days where I make a bunch of money and I just feel like meh whatever luckily I had good accounts but it was very rewarding work or whatever you know what I mean everybody does stuff differently I get asked to do tons of deodorizing and cleaning and I just don't I like the money but I Unless it's really dirty, it doesn't really, I don't really get nothing out of it as far as enjoyment. Uh, you know. So I went down, up, I'm about to cross over. And if you don't follow this line exactly, you just it'll come off with some solvent later. So I'm gonna do like quarter inch stitches. Um, sometimes I'll stick with the size of stitch that the factory has, but on a big stitch like this, oh man, I'm getting water on me already. On a big stitch like this, uh, I start to do a big stitches. I'm not gonna lie, because I don't want to be here all day. You know, nobody owns this car except the, the lot owner. And again, he's not really even out here expecting what I'm inspecting what I'm doing. I've known him for 25 years, so. He just trusts me that I'm gonna help his cars go down like medicine with a little bit of spoonful of sugar for them customers. All right. Coming up. And I'm gonna take the other one. I'm gonna pull this, I'm gonna pull this string back every time you'll see me doing this. And it, showing me the hole to put this needle down in because if you thread your needle through this other thread, and you, and you go to pull it tight, it won't work. And if, like me, you go about four or five stitches at a time before you cinch it up, then you're pissed because you go to cinch it up, it doesn't cinch, and you have to unwind five stitches or however many uh, and find the problem before you can start again. So be mindful of that. I don't pull it all the way tight. I'll leave a little loop so I can grab it, pull it back. Now, I didn't get this type, type of instruction either. I, I just... You know, if I get if people show me ideas, I run with it, uh, which is what I've been trying to do for other people. But I, 
people have really short attention spans is what I've noticed. Uh, a lot of my videos are only two to four minutes long. And I know that some of the stuff I do, other people don't do. It's not common because I would see it and I just, it's not common. A lot of the things I do. And I don't know if it's because I'm not spelling it out what I'm doing in the videos or what. But anyway, I notice real short attention spans. And I uh, see I'm a little bit foggy, but I don't even know what I'm talking about right now. So anyways, um, so I'm going to go ahead and try to describe everything I'm doing to you and why. Uh, why do I wait? Let's talk about why do I wait. Oh man, I see my thread's getting kind of mangled. I'm twisting it too much. Um, I wait four or five, six stitches to pull it tight because if you don't mark this line, it's harder to gauge where you're at. If, you, if I keep pulling this tight, it's harder to tell how, how far away I need to be spacing my stitch uh, to have a nice taper, you know, because you're, you're, you're pulling it tight and taking your taper away. Now, it um, takes a little bit of practice to, to, to zip through these without, I'm going to try to unwind this. I know in like 15, 20 minutes, but it's totally possible. I have another video I knocked out of kind of an oddball stitch in 20 minutes. Uh, I'll, I'll show you another tip right now too. Hold on a second. Yeah. So these needles, they can want to break if you're stitching through something real stiff. And if you're having trouble, you know, I'll get this thing and just start pushing and pulling and feed that sucker through and grab it and do it again. Look, we go on a hike together and you slip and fall. I got you, dude. I'm going to stitch your leg right up. And it's going to look pretty. You're not going to be like, man, I got I to gotta do it yourself. Stitch stitches in the woods. Look how mangled it. Nope. It's going to be looking good, buddy. I might only have this size of thread though, so it's going to hurt. Uh, you know, you want to keep an eye and try to, you know, try to make your your stitches even. You don't want to get too wonky. If you do, you just, you know, correct it and try to straighten them out. I, you know, I, I hate redoing things. This is not a Lamborghini. I most of the area around me is not real wealthy. And uh, I do have some high-end lots, but uh, this ain't one of them. Long story short. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pull it tight. Oh, this I keep bumping this. This is probably gonna be bad. All right. Anyway, I, I don't want to cut a lot of this out, so hopefully the camera's on the on the stitch. And um, because I again I've been talking the whole time and I don't you know I do this all day long. I don't live nearby. I always have a 30 minute to an hour drive everywhere I go because I live out in the woods. I live out in the woods. And uh, I don't want to redo stuff. I just want to do it as best I can the first time. Learn whatever I can learn. Complete the job. Get some practice. Move on. Uh, so I don't have a lot of time to edit videos and do all that stuff, you know. I've been making videos lately and you guys gotta know it takes a little time to not put out garbage. You know, you got there's a, a lot more work than I realized. I have to make an interesting picture for the thumbnail you have to unload you have to upload un or you know fill out also all sorts of data and information on the video description all that add whatever kind of messages I want uh, music if I can figure it out uh, and then you got to cut all the you have to cut it. You know, I have to. So I ended up watching all my videos that night, 
uh, two or three times and doing all that work before I post them. And some of them are dumb or, or really small, short videos. So, anyways, I just hope you guys appreciate and know that when you. You know what? I made a mistake. I didn't pull tight enough on these first ones, and you can see my thread a little bit. That's all right. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna touch that up before I even let you see it. A little bit of paint ain't gonna, ain't gonna. But you can see, you, there ain't, there's no pucker here. I nailed that. It can be done. And I'm gonna keep nailing it till it's got nails in it. Piece of wood for support. That piece, that 2x4 I put right here, you're not going to wear that out. You can slide right in and out all day if you want. All day. So, looks like I'm doing like 5 8 stitches. That's what I like. Uh oh. Get into a weak spot. So, now I'm just going to go deeper through the material instead of just the one layer, and then I'm gonna come back up. So it has a bite. You know, it's not gonna rip through when I go and pull on these. I never even looked at the foam, but the foam is good enough. Um, oh, this camera. I will get in there and repair the foam if it needs it. Uh, rip through it. All right, I'm gonna back this out, and I'm gonna have to do a little bit of something I don't want to, but it's required. So, one thing you can do is you can super glue the edge of this to stop it from from ripping out. Uh, but I don't want to do that really right now. I'm just I'm just gonna. I gotta keep checking this camera because I keep knocking it loose. Um, let's see. In this case, I'm going to stick a new hole a little bit deeper through both, all three pieces of material. Uh, it's just, it's not liking it. It's not liking me. You know what I could do here? I'm going to do it. I'm going to throw an extra long stitch and move past that that weak area, a little bit closer to a half an inch. And it's close enough. Yeah, it's close enough. But I don't have to redo this one. Again, I'm going to punch through all three pieces of material so this doesn't rip out. And then when you go to pull it tight, you can just take something sharp and push your material down so that when you do pull tight, Looks like a million bucks. Looking like a million trucks. It was looking like, eh, it wasn't like bad. But if I don't do this, I can't make a video about it. You guys? Can't wear my hot pink gloves. Um. You know, I also try to make my videos a little bit more interesting than a lot of people's as far as color and background and everything else. Like I said, it's not easy. It takes some planning. It adds time to my jobs. Not a lot, but again, if you... You know, I'm always on the job when I'm making these videos. And I, I don't want to take a long time. I want to get going. I want to make money. Go home. Now because I did this, it's not going to look as good, but it'll be a lot stronger. And I will choose strength over cosmetics, um, even though my cosmetics is 
turning out just fine. I was talking with another guy yesterday about, uh, two days ago, about the synthetic sinew. I don't know if you guys have ever stitched with that. I'm going to go grab it and show you. We've got um, the wax thread. This is pretty cool stuff for certain applications because you, as you stitch, it, it tends to stick when you pull it tight and it won't, the, the seat won't keep pulling apart as you let go. Um, but it is really thick. It's also very strong. Uh, this here is awesome. You don't have this. You can buy little small rolls of it. This is a giant roll, but uh, it almost has a little bit of beeswax on it as well. Um, but it's very slippery and strandy. So it's not it's not like twine. Twine acts as like a serrated saw as you pull through your leather, and and it saws your holes into you know it, it saws your holes bigger. Is this just slips right through and it's unbelievably strong. I can't, I'll try to break it. Oh, it broke, but it's, it's stronger than this other string. All right, enough sidetracking. Cause I can do this on leather. You know, I can taper it out. Uh, it's a little bit hard on the hands and it better be one nice vehicle or I'll probably just do a vinyl repair because you know, I can, I can take a sewing machine and I can reupholster the panel too. It's just all about what, how much money you want to spend. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't care. I'd really rather not upholster anything because I'm a little bit slower at that than everything else. I don't do it day in and day out. I never went to school for it. I'm just self-taught. Um, and so, you know, I'll do whatever. I don't care. Whatever you want to do, I'll do it. And then it's just up to me to make sure that I can do all of the repairs in a similar or in a timely fashion to where the money works out to the same or whatever. And then just make a choice. What do you want me to do? You know, I don't care. This seat, this stitch will probably last a long time. Um, car's not in terrible shape. Here we go. I'm going to pull it tight. I got my four or five stitches laid down. Ah, that didn't. I'm going to tuck that a little better and then pull tight. Eh. Yeah, there's my little wonky spot. Whatever. I was hoping it would come out perfect. But again, this, this cloth is super thin and cheap and not very strong. But look at that. You know what? I think it's probably been about 20 minutes. I stopped a couple times to grab something and this is a long stitch but yet and I'm talking and going slow and checking the camera but yet I'm still almost done 20 uh, it's about 24 25 minutes something like that watching some videos lately and they're cool it's interesting and it's cool I'm glad people do make videos but the reason I started this YouTube channel is because most videos I watch are interesting but I do not adopt any new methods usually which there's a reason because the methods I have I feel are either faster or better or both now I do learn things and I do pick things up but I have to circle back to things uh, when they arise in order to test something I've seen or just something I haven't thought about, you know, like using a DA on leather. Eh, I like the sound of that. Sounds like it goes really fast. Uh, but sanding my hand goes fast too, so it's not really a problem I'm trying to solve. But, um, but I have learned things uh, from multiple people that speak up and talk to me. 
Uh, it's kind of the beauty of social networking is um, people can share information and learn. Somebody's calling me or texting. But anyway, uh, yeah, there's stitch videos out there. I don't, I'm not sharing information that's not, that's unknown. Um, but I, I'm gonna, you know, I'm try to do a better job of explaining real life scenarios of what's what's going to happen, what you're going to look for, what you want to do uh, to get the best results. And so I hope you guys appreciate it. Um, Again, I've never had any training, and I almost hesitate to watch anybody else's videos because I don't, I want to show you what I figured out on my own to get good results, and I don't want to watch other people's videos and then share what I've learned from someone. I, I just, I don't know if that makes sense, but I don't want to taint what I already know with someone else's information, because um, I already know a lot of, you know, I can show you what I do. I already get results. Uh, you know, I do want to learn and I do want to get better results and get faster all the time at anything, but you know, at the end, at the end of the day, my customers are happy. I keep my accounts and, uh, and I get better all the time. So that's kind of a explanation of why I started this channel. I think I can show you how to do it faster usually. And if not, at least I don't put some banjo music in there. I might put some rap music or some rap beats, but man, people got bad music on the internet. I'm gonna play some banjo music while I'm watching you fix a steering wheel? What are you doing? Uh, you know, are we gonna have lemonade and sit down on the porch and talk about steering wheels? Or are we gonna fix them quickly and make some money? You know, I don't. I like cars, but I'm here to make a living, you guys. I miss my kids and my wife all the time because I need to make money, not because I need to be the best steering wheel guy, you know? I'm one problem at a time. People bring me a problem, I try to solve it in 30 minutes to an hour, and then that go on to the next. Okay, so for this last stitch, Now for this last stitch. Pull that tight. Uh, there's no taper. You know, you, you, you're gonna have to stare at that thing. If you're an interior guy, you're gonna know that this stitch, now you, it, it's gonna take you a double take, but right here you'd see that and you'd think, that's kind of weird. Um, but for this last stitch, I'm going to tie it and then I'm gonna stitch backwards underneath and pull my strings out and then pull it tight. So let's do that and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh oh. I just snagged my own thread, but that's alright. And this is tapered enough. I'm I'm ready to be done. These can come untied you guys. So you you pr I recommend tying it three times a like triple square knot. Even though it's a big old ball. And then come back, see how long it takes to rethread these things. I don't, I mean, seconds, seconds turn into minutes, guys. I don't want to do it at all. So if I can keep them needles on there the whole time, I'm happy camper. So as you can see, I tied the knot and now I'm going to go back and you can come up right, you know, you can come up from wherever you want. I usually just come back a little ways and come up, try to come up on the seam out of somewhere where you've already stitched. And then you take your other needle, same hole or just very close to it. When you, when you, uh, if you don't get it in the same hole, it doesn't matter. It's still going to, you're going to hear a little pop when you pull it. All right, here we go. I'm going to hide this knot. Will pop. I don't know if you heard that. And then you just pull your strings tight. 
and then suck right back into the seat when you cut it. Done. I'm actually done this time too. Eh, maybe I'm not, darn it. I just, I keep saying I'm done in these videos, like I said, before I'm done. And then later I finish them and I look back at the video and I'm like, I wasn't done, why did I say that? Anyway, um, I'm gonna take a little gray and just touch these three, four, five, six, seven. This is where it got kind of wonky on me. You can see I had to stitch a little closer into some better material there. And then here I was talking and not paying attention and I allowed the other stitch to show. But all in all, It's pretty dang good, you guys. I... Leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this. You think that's a good stitch? You think I could have done it better? I think I could have done it better. I mean, I could have taken... You know, you can stitch it all the way to the end so that you don't have a difference in stitch from here to there. Um, but let's look close. Take my pen mark off. Uh, right here, I can see a little... Where did I see it? Right. Is it that thing I was looking at? No, I'll just. Burn that off. Anyway. Right there. Oh, it's the wrong end of my needle anyway you know you can go through and mess with it poke these through make sure you don't have any high spots like right here and it's not bad anyway there you go guys bang bang blind needle stitch double needle stitch whatever you want to call it I call it making money making money stitch um, sexy as it is I guess uh, thanks for watching I hope that I helped you learn something today um, I hope you think of me when you're out there doing this stitch you are gonna make money doing this if you do this for a living uh, you can see the results are good and it's a lot less time than reupholstering and uh, you're gonna work you're gonna knock it out get out there and knock them dead all right hit the like and subscribe I'll see you guys later